Going over ArrayList today, let's get straight into it. ArrayList is in the Java API. It's a class in the API that acts as an array, except we don't have to initialize the size. And it's different when we add things, and we can also remove things unlike an array. So let's get straight into it on line 16. See these red squiggly lines here is because we have to do an import. So if you right click it, click fix imports in NetBeans. If you don't know how to do that, just type that right there and you're good to go. So in order to create an array list, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to type array list with the A and L being capitalized. We're going to angled brackets. And then this right here specifies what data type the array list will be. Name list is what we're going to name the variable that holds the memory address of the array list. And then we're going to set it equal to a new array list that is full of strings parentheses, semicolon. This new keyword is allocates new memory in Java. And our array list right here, this is the constructor, and it just basically makes a new array list. So that is the simple way. Um, once again, this string right here just specifies that the array list that we created can only hold strings, not anything else. So how we add to the array list is not like adding to an array. What we're going to do is we're going to do the dot operator after we name the variable, and then we're going to do an add function, which is inside the class of array list. And then we're, the parameter that it takes is the data type that the array list is made out of. So in this case, array list name list is made out of strings. So we're going to add strings. If this was an int instead, then we would put an integer between these parentheses and it would do the same thing. So as you can see here, we're going to add three names. Jones, Tyson, and Ray. And it just works the same as an array using a subscripts and indexes. It starts with position zero and it goes on from there. So the size of an array list is just like an array. It's going to be one minus the size. It's going to be the last subscript. So I'm going to show you the size. Or I'm going to show you how to get an array list, a certain subscript. So in this case, we want to get Jones, and we want to show it to the display. So we're going to print ln statement, and we're going to say the variable, and we're going to use the dot operator again, and we're going to say get zero. So basically what that does is it gets the first subscript of the array list and the first value. So we're going to run it right here, and it should get Jones, because Jones is at position zero because that's the first one we added. And as you can see here, it's just going to say Jones. So the only difference in arrays and array list is array list has a bunch of methods that we use to make it easier. So showing the size of an array. So what we're going to do is show you the size of the array, and that is also a method inside the array list class. And as you can see here, we're going to say the size is, and we're going to name the variable, we're going to use the dot operator again, and we're going to say size parentheses. So if it's a method, we always have to put the parentheses at the end, so that way it calls that method and executes it. If it's a variable, like in, in, in a regular array, a length is a variable, we don't have to use the parentheses. But in this case, it's a method, so we do. So we're going to do the size, which the size is going to be 3. So the size is 3. That works perfectly. So now if we want to display all the names, we can simply say print ln and just name the variable inside the parentheses. So in this case, it's name list. And as you can see here, Jones, Tyson, and Ray is what we put in there. So it's going to print out in commas and between these square brackets every time if you do so like that. Now removing an array list, this is a, uh, so in a regular array, we can't remove certain items, but in an array list, we can, because unlike an array, an array list, fluctuates with the size as we add and remove items. And as you can see up here, we never had to tell the array list to have three items in it. It's every time we add an item, it's going to increase the size by one. That's why we use array list instead of arrays, because we don't have to tell it the size. So to remove an item, what we're simply going to do is name the variable, name list, and we use the dot operator to call the remove function. And inside the function, we're going to type the parameter of the subscript uh, that we want to remove. So in this case, we want to remove the very first item that we put in it, which is Jones. 
So we're going to type remove and then the subscript is zero and then we're going to print reprint the name list. So you can see here that now it just prints Tyson and Ray. So now the size of the list is two and Tyson is at subscript zero and Ray will be at subscript one. Now if we insert an item, it's a little bit different. So inserting an item, not appending. So when I say insert, we're going to insert at a certain subscript and not append it to the list at the very end. So when we add it, we do the name list, do the dot operator, and we want the add function. The add function takes two parameters, and let's say we want to add Jones back to the normal position that it was at. So we're going to put zero as the first parameter because it was at the zero subscript, and we're going to say comma, and the second parameter is going to be the data type that is made out of the array list, which in this case is shrink. So we're going to type Jones and put that back to where it was. And after we reprint the name list again, you can see that it goes back to the first value, Jones, Tyson, and Ray. Now we could have just said that right there, and now Tyson would have been first and Jones would have been last. So we, we can rerun it. You can see here that Tyson, Ray, Jones, but we want to add it back to where it was. Now it says Jones, Tyson, and Ray. So let's create another array list, and this time it's going to be full of integers. So I'm on 43 here. It's going to be the same exact thing, but instead of saying string in the angled brackets, we're going to say integer. Now the tricky part here is we can't say int or double and stuff like that. We have to say the wrapper class of the data type. So it can be string, it can be integer, it could be double, float, and here are all the wrapper classes. So if we put just int in there, it would actually throw it an error because it doesn't like that. It wants an actual class that has certain methods and functions that we can use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 10, 20, and 30 to our numbers list. And we're gonna use a for loop to display all those numbers. So as you can see here, we're gonna say for int i equals zero. i is less than numbers.size, so, so we use size to tell the for loop when to stop. And then we're gonna increment i, and we're gonna show all of the list. So i starts at zero, so it's gonna show the subscript zero, and then one, and then two. So that's three values, zero, one, and two. So we're gonna run it real quick, and as you can see here, it's gonna say 10, 20, and 30. Now let's add another, and we'll say 40. So now the size is going to be three, or no, I'm sorry, the size is going to be four, and it's going to go all the way to three, so zero, one, two, and three, and show all the values, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Down below, we have an enhanced for loop, which I'm going to show you, and this is not too complicated, but it's kind of hard to wrap your head around if you don't know what it does. So we use enhanced for loops for, it's just shorter lines of code and it looks a lot neater. So it's basically the same exact thing as a for loop, except for there's not the three steps where initialization, test, and the update. Instead, it's gonna go through the whole numbers list and it never tests anything. It's just gonna keep on going until the size hits the limit. So we're gonna say for parentheses, int number, colon, numbers, and we're gonna print out each number. So what this does is this first statement right here before the colon, it signifies the data type of the list numbers. So numbers is the array list that we created up here. And so since numbers is an integer data type, the first thing we tell it is we say for all the data types that are ints in the list of numbers, we're going to display that number. Now this doesn't have to say number, this can say num or whatever you'd like it to be. So for all the integers, so for all the ints, we're going to display all the ints in the array list of integers. Basically, like I said, it's just a lot neater and shorter lines of code. I'll explain that one more time. So for all the integers in numbers display numbers. So if the array list was full of strings, then we would say string instead.
Before we wrap up the video, we'll go through the basic structure one more time. So we're going to say array list, which is a class in the Java API that is similar to an array, except we don't have to allocate the size. And then we're going to do angled brackets, and between the angled brackets, we're going to specify the data type we want the array list to be. Then we're going to give the array list a name and set it to a new array list constructor. And then we're going to use the keyword new to allocate new memory. And, and then we're going to type array list again, give it the angled brackets with the data type in it, and then the parentheses and semicolon at the end. This parentheses right here is basically the constructor in the array list class, and it basically just allocates new memory. So once again, we can add stuff, we can remove stuff, and we can get stuff. But unlike an array, we don't use the square brackets. In the array list, we actually use functions inside that class, which makes it a lot easier on us.